Hi, I'm Jeff Walker with Parking Heater Products. We've been selling fuel-fired heaters and replacement parts for over 10 years with a combined industry experience of over 30 years. We're dedicated to providing quality heater replacement parts, expert customer service, fast and economical shipping, all backed by our 100% satisfaction guarantee. Check us out at DKSI.com, your trusted source for quality heater products. In this video, we're gonna look at our PHP Gen 3 air heater. I have a, a two kilowatt air heater mounted on our test bench. This uh, air heater is typically used for truck applications, but can be used anywhere where there's 12 volts and diesel fuel is an onboard fuel. Typically, we're mounting the heater inside the cab. It has to be mounted inside the cab. We're drilling a hole in the floor and then using our mounting plate and seal to fasten that and seal that to the floor. We tap into the fuel source for the test bench. I'm using this five gallon jerry can, a fuel pickup tube, and we typically either drill into uh, the tank or uh, look for an existing plug that we can tap into. Coming out of the fuel pickup, we have a two millimeter ID fuel line that runs up to our, our fuel pump. Our fuel pump is, uh, is mounted on a 15 degree to a, uh, to a vertical to allow air to pass through it. And then we have a, a clear plastic fuel line that runs up into the heater. Underneath the heater here, we can see here, we've got our combustion air intake and our exhaust. The combustion air intake picks up the air from outside of the, um, the vehicle, brings it in to the, uh, to the heater, mixes with the fuel for combustion. And then the unburnt gases come out the exhaust. We move that to the outside of the vehicle so it doesn't get trapped underneath the vehicle. Our ducting system. On this end of the heater, we have our air pickup, so it's return air that's coming back into the heater over the sealed heat exchanger, and then we're blowing the hot air through this rotatable outlet inside the cab. And uh, so our electrical. So we use a, uh, a one main cable that splits off into three different sections. It's got a 15 foot fuel pump circuit, a uh, 15 foot power harness, and then a 20 foot switch harness. We use a, uh, an operating switch that's uh, mounted inside the, the uh, heated area. So we press and hold the button for three seconds. The switch will come on. When we turn the heater on, the first thing that happens is the ECU, the control unit does the systems check. It checks the different circuits, the glow pin circuit, the blower, the temperature sensor, and the fuel pump to make sure that everything is intact, to make sure there's enough voltage to operate the heater. The next thing that happens is the glow pin will start to preheat. This is just a, uh, this is the glow pin here. It's just a simple, um, element that when we put 12 volts to it, it gets red hot. When we apply the fuel to that or pass the fuel past that, it ignites the fuel. And so that's how we start the combustion. So the next thing after, while the preheat is happening is the blower will start to turn and that will bring in combustion air from outside of the vehicle. After a short period, our fuel pump will start to pulse. The fuel pump works like an electric solenoid. We put 12 volts to it and a plunger pushes forward, gives us a shot of fuel. When we take the 12 volts away, that plunger resets, the fuel cavity refills, and again, it's ready for the next pulse. When it starts pulsing, we'll hear that pulsing sound and we can see the air bubbles travel through the fuel line. Here, we can hear the fuel start to kick in. Most of the sound that we hear is from the exhaust. It's, it's, uh, it gets a little bit noisy, but that's outside of the vehicle. It's normally very quiet inside the vehicle. We can start to feel some heat coming out of this. And a few moments later, we'll, we'll see that the, the glow pin switches off. There's a little symbol on our operating uh, switch that 
monitors the, the systems and tells us what's going on. So now the glow pin is switched off. And now any, again, any new fuel that's coming into the heater is being ignited by the existing flame. This heater's got a, a unique um, operating mode. Uh, there's two different operating modes. First of all, we, could, we have a power mode. We can set the, uh, the temperature from 1.1 up to two. If we set it down for 1.1, the heater is going to slow down and the fuel pump pulses are gonna slow down, the blower speed's gonna slow down, and the heater will run in low heat. If we prefer, we can run that in high heat, turn it up to two, and it's going to run in this higher heat mode. That's uh, ideal for a cab application, um, a cargo application, where you want to be able to control the heat output. The other mode that we have is the automatic climate mode. To be able to set that, we just press the selector button. And from there, we can set the temperature, the desired temperature in the cab from 10 degrees right up to 35 degrees. I'm going to set that at, uh, at 22 degrees. That's about 72 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. It's important to note, when we set that in, um, in automatic climate mode, it's important to note that even though there is a temperature sensor in here that shows the current cab temperature, the heater actually uses a sensor that's located on the on the ECU. So it's sensing the temperature coming into the heater and using that as a representative, representative temperature that it's trying to regulate. So for that reason, it's important that we use return air ducting or otherwise make sure that the air coming into the heater is representative of the cabin temperature that we're heating. In this mode, the heater is going to regulate and the blower motor is going to speed up or slow down, bringing in the different combustion air, and the fuel pump pulses will speed up or slow down to maintain a fuel air ratio, but it's going to maintain uh, a nice even temperature. Some of the advantages of, of that for uh, a sleeper application is it, it, it it's uh, a little bit quieter, uh, there isn't an abrupt noise like a household furnace where the furnace comes on and you hear a blast of air. Uh, it also uh, allows the heater to run continuously so that it's, it's not turning, starting and stopping. So it has less demand on the glow pin, which has less demand on the batteries. It also makes a nice consistent air temperature. To switch the heater off, we simply press and hold the selector button for three seconds. The fuel pump pulses will stop. The flame will slowly be extinguished. The glow pin will come on for an afterglow. That cleans off any fuel residue that is left on the, uh, on the glow pin. And the blower will continue to run to, to, to get rid of the heat and get rid of any unburnt fuel that's still left in the heat exchanger. So that'll continue to run for about a three minute cool down and then this, the, uh, the heater will shut off completely. The heater has a number of different safety systems. It is monitoring the, uh, the temperature. So it, uh, if there's a blockage and an overheat occurs, the system will shut down. If there is a flame out, the heater will try to restart if the flame does not uh, establish on startup, the heater will shut down. If there's a break in any of the circuits, the heater will shut down. If it has been operating, then it will um, it'll conduct a three minute cool down before switching off completely. If there is a fault, then we will also will see a fault code displayed on the, on the control switch. So that's it, that's our two kilowatt air heater. Uh, for further information, more details on the operating switch 
information about uh, installation, operation, troubleshooting, uh, please consult our manual or look for our other videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Check us out at DKSI.com for quality heater products, fast and economical shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.